My company earns enough to nearly buy 200,000 McDonald's Big Macs every single month. That's a lot of Big Macs. And by the end of this video, you will be able to do the same. Because in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to create an offer for your SMA that is so compelling and so persuasive that it literally never fails you. I'm gonna give you 50 proven offers that you can use to get clients that you can copy. I'm gonna show you how to identify market gaps and opportunities. I'm gonna show you how to position your service and your product against your competitors so that you can stand out even in a saturated niche. And more importantly, I'm going to walk you through a complete step-by-step -step guide on how to craft an offer that people cannot turn down. Let's get started. So here we are inside of the Google Doc. This is available in the description. It's free for you to download. I'm not going to sell you anything in this video, at least not until the very end. And another thing as well, if you're watching this video and you're trying to build a business, if you can't stick around and watch this video for an hour or two on how to build offers, how the hell are you going to build a business? So pay attention, lock yourself in, no distractions, let's go. So as promised, Immediately, I aim to please 50 examples of proven offers in over 20 popular SMA niches. Ta-da, right? That'd be $997, please. I am joking, this is completely free. So, I've got a bunch of examples here, and basically what I've done is I've gone through the most popular niches, right? And I've curated the offers from the top agencies in those niches, so we know they work. We know they have historical credence to them because, well, these offers have been signing these big agencies clients for a long, long time. So we've got the roofing niche, we've got the pest control niche, we've got the real estate niche, we've got the gym niche, we've got the stem cell niche, which is a strange one, but it's kind of cool. We've got the Cairo niche, the dental implants niche, the HVAC niche, e-commerce niche, SaaS niche, trucking niche, personal injury lawyer niche, restaurant niche, dentist niche, in insurance agents niche, martial arts niche, psychologist niche, cosmetic surgery, financial advisors, physical therapists, do with it what you will. Now here's the thing. This is a shiny object. You know how like crows behave or like birds behave? Where they go and get like bits of tin foil or they'll, they'll get like a spoon and then they'll take it back to their nest and collect it and then you know, they, whoever can have the shiniest nest wins. That's kind of how agency owners work, right? So right now you're looking at this and you're thinking, oh my God, this is the be all end all savior of my business. No, wrong. This is here to give you inspiration so that you can build your own unique offer. And I'm putting this at the beginning and I'm trusting you to not just run for the hills with this and cross your fingers and spray and pray with an offer that's already been proven by another agency. This is inspiration, okay? Do not use the excuse of great artist copy, a good artist copy, great artist still, because to be frank, Picasso wasn't a businessman, right? So let's not apply him here. Okay, so let's get into it. Don't copy these. These are just the start. There's a better way to build your own. So we're gonna refer back to these later, but for now, it's time for a lesson in offer building. What actually is an offer? How the hell do these things work? Well, let's get to grips with what we're actually dealing with here. If you can't coherently and concisely define something, you don't really know how to build it. Right, so let's actually start from square one and understand what offers. I don't care if you've read $100 million by Hormozy, let's actually just get to grips with this thing. So in client acquisition, an offer is the way a product or service is positioned. Offers are positioning, okay? Offers have strength and strength works on a scale. Offers aren't weak or strong. Offers aren't good or bad. It's a question of how weak or how strong or how good or how bad. And an offer can only be strong or weak or good or bad in contrast to another offer. So when we're evaluating the strength or effectiveness of an offer, we can't do it without contrasting it against another offer. So this is the first important lesson in critical thinking here when it comes to building offers is there's no such thing as a good or bad offer. It's how good or how bad compared to all the other offers in your niche. And this is why there's so much leverage to be gained from building effective offers, okay? So when you create an offer, you are positioning your product. And the way you position your product influences your market's perception of that product, which then influences their confidence in it. So what we're doing by creating an offer is we are effectively positioning our product in a way that is favorable towards the client or market or prospect gaining confidence in what we do. The offer serves the purpose of building conviction from the prospect's perspective. That is the whole reason we craft an offer. It is to gain their confidence and trust. And so it's a position, it's against other agencies, simple. For example, a weaker offer could be considered, I sell a course that contains videos explaining how to get clients. A stronger offer is, I sell an easily installed client acquisition infrastructure pre-built for you by experts who have already solved the problem for themselves. Now, what do you think you're more likely to buy? Someone who says, I have a video course that explains how to get clients. Or, I sell client acquisition infrastructure pre-built for you by experts that have already solved it themselves. What's more compelling? What resonates harder with you? Well, it's the latter, of course, right? And the reason the latter resonates more is because the first one is weaker than the last one. 
Okay, so this is, this is it. This is what offers are, it's positioning. Both of these are offers, but one is significantly stronger than the other. The above examples are only weak or strong when con contrasted to each other. Offers aren't good or bad, only when compared to other offers made by competitors. Because 90% of the people in the space don't understand offer creation, you can gain a huge, huge asymmetric advantage here. So the offer creation, this is why this video is so important, by the way. Like, if you don't pay attention to this stuff and you don't nail the offers, you can just kiss goodbye to success. Like, it's the easiest way to, to build your agency to like 10, 20, 30, 40 grand a month is just nailing the offer because not many people know how to do it. So key points in offers or key points on offers in high ticket client acquisition. Now this won't apply to all businesses, but it will if you're watching this one, if you're an agency owner, coach, consultant, et cetera. So offers succeed when they position products as vehicles or pathways to escape current situations and achieve desired ones. Bear with me. I'm going to explain way more on this in just a second, but this is it for now. Offers succeed when they are unique and force the market to perceive a product or business in a different, better way to competition. Niches and markets don't saturate, offers do. So if you think you're in a saturated niche and you can't get clients, the niche isn't the problem. For the niche to saturate, every business in that niche would suddenly have to wake up and have their problem solved. That's the definition of saturation, when there's no more demand. Because if there's no more demand, there's no need for supply. But for as long as the problem exists, demand is necessary, right? The supply is necessary because the demand is there. So uh, something can only really saturate in this, in this online business space if the demand goes away, but the demand isn't going away. If anything, there's a, the demand is increasing, right? It's all about positioning. It's about forcing the market to look at your product and your business at a different angle. So let's say, for example, you've been watching my YouTube channel for uh, some period of time, and let's say you're looking at Easy Grow, which is our product. Don't worry, no pitching coming, but let's say you're looking at that as, as, as an example. You probably see Easy Grow and my program around client acquisition in a completely, if, if I've done my job properly here, in a completely different way to all the other people who say they can help you get clients. And that is, that is the, the most important thing in business, is your perception of my product, above all. If you think my product is different and a little bit better than everybody else's, you're more likely to buy it. Simple math. Now, this is important. A product is not an offer. A service is not an offer. A guarantee is not an offer. A discount is not an offer. A price is not an offer. So what the hell is? So when people are building their agency or starting a business, they think like, if, if, if the market goes to them and say, hey, what do you offer? The, the, the agency owner will go, oh, I offer Facebook ads, or I offer search engine optimization, or I offer Google ads, or something like that. No, 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 you don't offer that. That's, that's how you deliver the outcome, right? The closest thing that we can really get to what actually is an offer is it's the outcome the prospect wants. But I'm going to explain this in, in far more detail. So the, the structure of an offer is very simple. The outcome is, is the most important thing, right? You are offering a solution. You're offering the outcome they want. You're not offering to run their ads. You're not offering to do their sales. You're not offering any of that. You are offering what happens as a result of you successfully doing your job. The, the transition, the period of change, the outcome, the promise. It should align with the goal and desired situation of your market. Another component of the offer is the time frame. How long will it take to deploy the methodology to achieve the outcome or result? So if I told you, hey, I can get you to 10 grand a month, but it's gonna take me 25 years, well, you probably wouldn't be very interested in that offer. Method tangible, clear methodology as to how the outcome can be achieved. This is the third component of your offer. Not only do we have the outcome that we're promising and the time frame by which we can promise it, but we have to explain how the hell we're going to do that. Otherwise, people are just like, yeah, you're, you're lying. Secrets, right? Your unique way of executing the methodology and making it work. Safety net, risk reversal, a guarantee, a way to protect, feel safe and confident. Polarizing, excluding people it isn't for to bring the people it is for even closer, okay? Here's the thing. Sometimes you have to... It, you, you achieve inclusion through exclusion. So if, you, if you're creating an offer for your market and it's for a very specific type of person in your market, sometimes instead of trying to call out the people who you want, call out the people who you don't want because resonance can come from both ends of the spectrum, okay? Pricing, how much it costs to claim the offer and make it happen. So here's an example. The outcome could be 20 grand in new monthly revenue, 100 appointments, losing 30 kilos, getting a wife. Let's say you're a coach and you, you help men who are you know, pretty lonely and they want to get a wife. They want to be married, right? Let's, let's say, okay, let me give you a more tangible example. Let's say that you're a marriage counselor. Your service is marriage counseling, but you don't offer marriage counseling. You offer a happy marriage. If you're a personal trainer, your service is training people in the gym and providing meal plans, but your offer is feeling confident in your skin and feeling, feeling great naked. Same thing if you're a golf coach. You don't offer golf coaching lessons, what you offer is 
winning at golf or beating your friends at golf. If you're a chess coach, right? You know, you're not offering strategies on how to win at chess. You're offering more chess victories. So it's the outcome that matters. This, please, I know I'm dr drilling this in continuously, but this is the most important thing, is the outcome, the time frame, the method by which that outcome is achieved in that time frame, the secrets that make that method worthwhile, the safety net that protects the person if they choose to use your offer, then the polarization so they realize it's for them, and then last but not least, the pricing, which ironically is actually probably the least important thing, okay? So the gap, the entire world economy ticks on something called the gap, okay? In life, this is how the whole world works, okay? People have their current situation and they have a desired situation for most aspects of their life, right? These situations typically revolve around health, wealth, relationships, and happiness. So if we observe like pretty much 80 to 90% of all buying behavior, all buying behavior happens within four segments of someone's life. They're either buying things to make them healthier, buying things to make them wealthier, buying things to improve their relationships or buying things to improve their happiness or state of mental health, typically. Every day, people wake up and buy things that help them escape their current situation in usually one of these four things and achieve their desired situation. And this applies to everything from chocolate to a pet horse to easy grow. This is how it works. They have their current situation and they have their desired situation. Trumpets, please, lo and behold, do, 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 between these two points is a gap. And if you can bridge that gap, you create value for someone. So how do you make money? Or well, everyone's like, well, you add value. Well, what is value? Value is basically the bridging of this gap. It's, it's alleviating the pain of the current situation to achieve the desired. And so let's say, look, like, let's, let's use these examples, right? So let's say chocolate. You might be like, well, Charlie, this doesn't apply. How the hell does chocolate, like, do, how do you, what, what does that even mean, right? Well, if someone's current situation is they're craving chocolate and their desired situation is to have that chocolate craving satisfied, then they're going to eat chocolate because chocolate bridges the gap between those two states. Going from a state of discomfort to a state of comfort, going from a state of pain to a state of pleasure. Let's say a pet horse, for example. Let's say someone's current situation is that they're, they're, they had a pet horse when they were younger and it died and now they feel sad and lonely and like they're hobbied, they're not able to do it anymore. Well, their desired situation is to not feel those things, right? And to learn how to, you know, have a horse and whatever. I, I've never had a horse in case you can't tell. But if you buy a horse, this bridges the gap between being unhappy about not having a horse and being happy about having one. And then Easy Grow, right? Our program, which helps people with client acquisition. If the current situation is I'm broke, I have no clients, I have no clue what I'm doing. I'm completely in the dark and I don't know how to sell and how to book appointments. But the desired situation is like 10 grand a month, then Easy Grow bridges the gap. And the better your product is at bridging this gap and the faster it can do it, the more value you can add, the more money you can make. So that you're, I'm, I'm hoping you're starting to understand now that like, it's not just about claiming a, a fancy lead magnet and then thinking like, oh yeah, I've nailed it. Like you need to understand the components and the things that drive the buying behavior of the people in your market, otherwise you're never gonna win. So the secret of client acquisition is positioning your product and you and your business as a staircase the person can climb to bridge this gap. To sell well, your product must be a vehicle for change. So when I talk about positioning, right, get this. So when I say an offer is simply a way of positioning your product, you might be like, well, what, what, do, you, how, like, what do you mean by position? Like, it's not like, I'm not trying to talk dirty to you. What I'm saying is it needs to be positioned as a vehicle for change. Your product is a method, is a method or something that someone in your market can use to experience a transformation in their life. It's the, it's the number one rule of business is figure out what the market wants, figure out how to get them what they want, and then tell them you can get them what they want. <laughs> it really, it's not much more complicated than that, but everyone really doesn't get this. So this is why I'm making this video and why, in case you can't tell, I get a little bit too passionate about it because I'm a nerd. So as we know from the above, creating an offer is all about positioning your product. The strongest form of positioning available to you is positioning your product as the vehicle to help someone escape their current situation and achieve their desired situation. An offer gives you clarity on what you sell. So what do you sell? Drum roll, please, you sell a transformation. Now for your business to succeed, you must have product market fit. So you might have heard this before where people talk about product market fit, and then you're like, what the hell does that mean? Well, product market fit basically means your product and the message around that product, which is the offer, fit the desires and pains of the market. The best way to do this is to understand the current and desire situations of the market and then build an offer around this. Simples, product market fit, message market fit, kind of works like that. So when you're crafting your offer, you have to bear the market in mind because, well, the market will never bear you in mind. It's, you know, it kind of is a force of nature. Now, this is where this gets really interesting. So let's talk about 
alternative agencies for a very split second here. Because SMMA is the shiniest and most popular or proven business model for done-for-you services, but it isn't the only way. Because as I'm sure you've observed, there's plenty of problems people have, there's plenty of transformations they want to go through in their life, and maybe you have the skills or the ability to help them do that. So by default, whenever someone thinks about starting an online business or an agency, the, the you know 99.9% .9 of people start a social media marketing agency. Because, well, it's the, probably the most common and prevalent problem for business owners is, you know, the lack of growth and the, you know, the, the, the lack of um, economic expansion, for lack of better words. But there's businesses that have more than one problem, right? I can tell you that for free. So let's have a look at this. You make money when you add value to a niche. Value is created when pain is alleviated. One of my favorite quotes from myself. I'm so narcissistic. It's wonderful. So pain is alleviated when current situations are escaped and desired situations are achieved. So this all comes back to this value equation, like how do we make money? We add value. How do we add value? We remove pain. How do we remove pain? Well, we bridge the gap. So your niche may well have a current and desired situation with the state of their marketing, but I can guarantee they have plenty of other current and desired situations that need solving as well. So it's not always about the marketing. Let me give you some examples, right? If I was gonna start an agency from, from scratch, I probably wouldn't start a social media marketing agency. I would think critically and look at, pick a niche, a group of people that I'm interested in, and if you don't know how to do that, there's a video I made a couple of days ago on a niche, so that should already be on my YouTube channel. What you want to do is pick the niche and then you just ask, well, what problem does this niche have as a collective? And the, the big one is always gonna be client acquisition, but there's a ton of other problems that you can solve as well. So let me give you some examples that I currently have right now. So these are problems for Imperium acquisition for my eight-figure consulting business, and what I can tell you, Pretty much all of my friends and people in the same space as me, so I've got a lot of friends, I'm in Dubai, right? And I've got, believe me, I've got a lot of friends, trust me, all right, I'm popular. I'm, <laughs> no, I'm joking. But my friends, the people who are in my space, who live near me or who I spend time with, other eight-figure, multi-eight-figure or high multi-seven-figure business owners have the exact same problems. So I am, I am a mark, I'm in a market of, you know, although, albeit maybe a smaller market than you might be used to, but we all have these same problems, right? So for example, a lot of multi seven or eight figure info businesses that have these stupid profit margins, they want to source trustworthy property investment deals. So like what, what, we, what we look to do as a company is take all of the money we make and put it into property, right? Because you've got the soft asset of the, of the info business, which could explode at any time, but then you want to build a hard asset of like property portfolio. I'm not even joking. If I was gonna start an agency, I would work with high ticket info businesses that have already been successful and source property deals for them. <laughs> I would have an entire done for you property deal sourcing process, all the way from like finding the, finding the property, viewing it, like surveying it, going through like the whole A to B process of property. And you might be like, well, that's just an estate agent, but that's not how it works at all because Trust me, if you've ever tried to buy a house, even just as a cash buyer, it is hell on earth. And if there's one thing that info business owners at a high ticket level, at a high level, like multi seven, eight figures like to do, they like to save time. And they will happily pay, you know, anywhere between one to four or 5% of the total house value to save the time of having to go through the hassle of actually buying it. So I've actually solved this problem. I have someone very close to me who does all of my property deals for me and they manage my property investing portfolio. But like, if I didn't have that person and I didn't know them and I didn't trust them, I, well, I don't know what the hell I'd do. I'd have to go and find like some sorcerer and yeah. So that's, that's just one thing that comes to mind. Another example, right? Is let's say that you run an agency that helps info businesses or helps high ticket businesses improve their show rate. This is an interesting one, right? Because one of the problems we have right now um, for transparency is our show rate. A lot of you guys like to book sales calls and then just not turn up. It's Kind of annoying, actually, so please stop doing it. But in all seriousness, if someone came to me and said, hey, Charlie, like I can, I can take you from the show rate percentage you have now to an 80% show rate, and I'm gonna charge you four grand a month to do it, and I'm gonna guarantee that you get to 75 or 80%. Done, deal. If my show rate jumps by 10%, I make an extra like 100, 200 grand a month, which sounds stupid, but you get to a certain point in business where marginal gains create this huge asymmetric advantage. That's another problem that I, that I face if someone reached out to me and solved it. And you'd only have to solve that problem for like four or five high ticket info businesses to then make like 20 grand a month, right? Because if you, did, if you solved it for me, there's like 10 other people who I know who have exactly the same problem because show rate decreases with scale. So just another example, right? Twitter ghostwriting, newsflash, sorry about this. If you, any of you follow me on Twitter, I haven't written one tweet since my Twitter account <laughs> was created. I think there's like 6,000 followers on there now. I don't write any of those tweets. I haven't logged into Twitter since, I, it was, since it was created. 
there's someone that manages it for me for like three grand a month. And they just do all the tweet writing and stuff like that. And they have this really successful agency doing it, right? Copyright takedown services. So this is the other problem for info businesses is like a lot of people build courses and then those courses get like resold and ripped off by people in like third world countries and stuff. And so like you have to have someone going to these people and then like opening legal action against them and then like doing, I think it's called like DAMC takedown. There's, there's all these fancy terms for it. I don't really know. Copyright takedown services for info businesses. Like it's another example, something you could get to like multi six figures just, just like that. Finding strategies for my program. So this is may, maybe more niche specific to, to my situation, right? But there's info businesses they want to improve their products and they want to they want to do this. So for me, for example, if someone came to me and said, hey, Charlie, I will find you like every quarter, I will find you one to three new outbound client acquisition strategies that are cutting edge and new. And I will make the videos for your program and teach them and to your clients. I would pay someone like 30 grand a month to do that. <laughs> Which I'm, and I'm not even joking. I'd happily pay like, you know, a couple of hundred grand a year. Well, 30 grand a month is quite a lot, but you know, I'd happily pay someone like six multi six figures a year to do that because it's worthwhile, it's a huge, it's worth your investment. Another example, finding the best coaches for my program, right? So you've got all of these info businesses that like do coaching. You could go to them and say, hey, I will source the best coaches in your niche and you pay me when I source them. And it's like a recruitment thing. Like it's like three grand per coach I introduce that you work with. Simple, I'll even manage the coaches, right? Another example, writing YouTube introductions for, for, for YouTubers, right? In case you haven't noticed, I kind of suck at it, but Arranging mastermind events is another one. So this is another thing about the info space is like these high ticket info business owners like myself, we eventually start masterminds, which is what I'm working on, maybe, I think. But they're a, they're a real pain in the ass to, to build and manage and you've got to book the events and you've got to book food and catering and then you've got to book like activities and then you've also got to arrange like guests and, and it's just, and then you've got to like liaise with everyone. It's just, it's a nightmare. But imagine if you had an agency that worked exclusively with high ticket info businesses that did all of their mastermind arrangements for them. You could, you could charge like three grand per event. Most people want to do three or four events a year. Done, easy, multi six figures right there. It doesn't, my point is you're solving a problem for someone. And this, this gap between current situation, desired situation does not have to be about marketing. So important, it doesn't. As long as you're solving a problem that is painful, you can make money, okay? So let me give you some more examples, just off the top of my head. I thought of this one, if I was gonna start an agency, this is also probably another example of what I did. Providing executive assistance to high ticket info biz sales reps. So like all of my sales reps, I've got like eight of them at the moment. They all make like six multi six figures a year, um, right? They're doing like 10 to 20 grand a month, maybe sometimes even more, 25, 30 grand a month in commission. And one of their pain points is like, they're so busy with sales calls, but they've still got to manage their time and they've got to manage their emails and all this crap and pipeline. Imagine if you went to high ticket um, sales reps and said like, hey, I will provide a personal executive assistant to you to run everything for you. And it's going to be like $1,500 a month, but they will basically take care of everything, right? They will reach out to all the, they, they, you know, do you know what I mean? Like, it's kind of like the, the sales rep would be like, okay, cool. And then you find a great, you know, assistant and you, you outsource the work and you train them and everything. And then you pay them 500 bucks a month and you get a thousand before you know it, you've got 10, 20 grand a month coming in from that. And these people talk, so it's another difference. Another example is providing personal assistance to high ticket info business owners. I want a personal assistant, I'd love one, but trying to find a good one is a nightmare. If someone came to me and said, hey Charlie, I'll, I'll find you a personal assistant, I guarantee they'll be amazing, and if you don't like them, I'll give you back your money, I'd pay like five grand for that, right? Qualified lead sourcing services for high-end B2B cold emails. So if, if you went to like, the, by the way guys, these, these are just some examples I came up with within, within like, like literally like two minutes of just writing these down, but I'm, I wanna just get your brain flowing, right? Some other, like this example. So you go to cold email agencies and you say, hey, I'll, I'll do all your lead sourcing for all your clients. And I guarantee that you will have like the best quality leads, a lot of money. Another one, providing aged or warmed Google Workspace accounts or, you know, providing cold DM accounts for outreach. One of the problems a lot of agency owners have is if they wanna do like outreach, they're bottlenecked by the amount of accounts they have. They're bottlenecked by their account restrictions. They can't send emails because they've got to keep warming them up. What have you provided like warmed emails? Like, hey, I'm going to sell, like, don't, don't, never wait for Lem List or Lem Warm, whatever it is. Like, never wait for instantly to warm up again. <laughs> it's worth it. People will pay you money for these things, okay? What about an agency for lead gen agencies that specializes in getting leads to show up? So let's say that you, you work with agencies that provide leads for their clients but then you do all the lead nurturing for those for those agencies. Because trust me, those agencies struggle to get their clients' leads to show up. So if you can build that system for them and have like a you know per client 
amount, you're going to make a ton of money. Close.io set up. So this is an interesting one. Right now we're setting up Close.io, which is a CRM for sales teams. I had to pay like 15 grand for this agency to like build it out for me. Right. And I was like, damn, that's a good little agency to have in it. <laughs> you know, need one client a month to make a couple of hundred grand a year. Not going to complain. Automation services. There's also all these AI agencies coming out and stuff, but I, I don't have too much faith in those at the moment because I think that like they, they are the future. But right now, like traditional business owners just think it's like kind of bullshit. So they're not going to buy it. But anyway, story for another day. So honestly, there's an infinite amount of problems that you could solve on a done for you basis and scale to 100 grand a month or 10K a month by solving them. And by the way, if anyone has any solutions to these problems, please feel free to reach out to me. I will tell all my friends and we will make you a millionaire, right? Problems in markets work on fractals. So when there is one business with the problem, there are many. So what I'm basically saying here is like, you've got the ability to understand that if one business owner in one niche has a problem, it's highly likely that that problem is extrapolated into the entire market. And so you should bear that in mind. But my point here is you've got all, there's so many options, there's so many agencies that you can start. And it doesn't have to be a short form content agency. It doesn't have to be an OnlyFans agency. It doesn't have to be a marketing agency. It doesn't have to be an AI agency. It can be anything, anything that you find interesting. And you know, honestly, like the more specific it is, like the less com competition you have, the more painful the problem, the more, the more leverage you have. I'm, I'm not even joking. If someone came to me and said, I can solve your shirt rate problem and get you to an 80% show rate, I would pay them like 200 grand a year because that would make me like an extra one to two million a year, right? So just, it's important to know that. If you want to gain a true advantage, try and focus on this, right? Now, how do you learn about the market's problems? Sales calls usually, but sometimes you have to start an SMA, get a bunch of sales calls, and then innovate on your offer to find a better product market fit. So the only reason I've got the luxury of, of being able to list off like, you know, 15 to 20 really profitable agencies like that is because I've been doing this for like seven years. So I understand the problem, I know the problems, I know what my problems are, I know what the problems of people around me are. Like I've, I've done like, what is it? I've probably done like 2,400 sales calls or something like that, something disgusting. I've signed thousands of clients into my program. So like when you get to that point, you can take a different look on the market and just list off these problems. But trust me, they, they exist and there's loads of them. Maybe, may, oh, for God's sake, man, like you just think outside the box. Maybe instead of doing marketing for gyms, you specialize in helping CrossFit gyms find qualified coaches in their area and you charge per coach you introduce. Or maybe you specialize in helping successful gym franchisees find their second location and you scout out the location and you do the negotiation. I, I don't know, I don't, because obviously like maybe that doesn't work, but all of these problems exist and you can solve them. So that's that. Now let's have a look at this thing called stimulus and response. So really, this is gonna get a bit weird, but to drill the product market fit idea home, we're gonna borrow a mental model from my good friend, biology. Think of it like this. Now there's an idea in biology called the lock and key theory. And basically this, this is, the, this is the, the, the model or theory given to explain the, the way that a substrate and an enzyme, an enzyme catalyzes a substrate to produce a chemical reaction. That's what I was trying to say, okay? And basically what this means is in your body, you have these things called enzymes, right? You should get to know about them, they're pretty cool. And basically inside of your body, like you have these enzymes and then you have these substrates. And then what happens is the substrate combines with the enzyme to produce a chemical reaction. So this is like how digestion works. And then there's like a million other things that enzymes do in your body that I don't know about, but that digestion is the easiest example. This is how you wanna look at your offer and your product. And I know this seems weird, like Charlie, what the hell do enzymes and substrates have to do with building a business? But look at it like this. So we have the enzyme and the substrate, they combine and then the enzyme catalyzes the substrate and then products are released which could be like, you know, calories or I don't, I don't know, but you get the point. Well, this is how it works. This is Charlie's dodgy biology lesson. So you have a person in your market or a person in your niche, and then you have an offer based on the product. And the way you want this to look is you want the, the offer or the, the, way the, the way the product is positioned to fit perfectly into the market. And if it does, then the market catalyzes the product and then value is created. So this is how it should work is the market is there and your product is here and you want I'm, I'm not gonna make a, a crude gesture with my hand. Maybe you were thinking about it, but I'm not gonna do it. But if this is a market and this is the product, like it should fit in nicely. And then once it's fit in, value is created because the, the market now has what it wants. It's like, oh, I'm looking for this shape and that shape's come through the product, right? So value. So when building your businesses or business, you have to fit to the conditions of the market. Rule number one, it's not about you. It's not about your preferences, your opinions, your ideas, or your ego, it's about the market. So when you're building a business, you have to build around what the market wants, not what you want, simple. I don't care what you want to offer. 
I don't care what you want to sell. I don't care what you think is good. The only thing that matters is what the market wants you to sell and what the market thinks is good and what the market wants you to offer. A lot of people need to keep their ego in check, myself included with this thing, but it's about the market, okay? So just remember this, next time you're trying to like force an offer or a product positioning onto the market and it's not working, just ask yourself, am I trying to literally put a round peg into a square, no, a square peg into a round hole, right? That's kind of how this thing works. Lock and key theory, don't forget it. The market will not mold to you, you must mold to the market. Now, you should not offer what you want to offer, you should offer what the market wants you to. This is another thing like guarantees and shit like that, right? Where people are like, Oh, I don't want to offer a guarantee because like it's risky. Well, my friend, if you're not willing to offer a guarantee, then someone else in the market will and they're going to get the client and not you. And also you're thinking about this from your perspective. You're being selfish and egotistical, right? Like the market doesn't care about what you want. If you don't want to offer a guarantee and you haven't got the confidence to offer a guarantee, then how is the market going to have the confidence to buy it? Do you see my point? You need to bear this in mind. So let's have a look at something called the offer dynamic, right? I'm hoping this is all starting to sort of sink in. Before you actually build your offer, let's translate everything we've just learned into a summary and a visual. So for a transformation to happen and therefore for value to be added through product market fit, something I call the offer dynamic has to exist. You know, when we talk about like dodgy biology lesson, like product market fit and value being created, well, what does that actually look like? So really there's eight pieces to the offer dynamic. So for an offer to, to work and to function and to create a value and to actually, you know, make you money, there have to be eight things present. So there's eight first principles of value addition and transformation. So the first one is current situation. Someone, there needs to be a person in a current situation and that person needs to have some mess, which is the problem for creating their painful situation. Then that person needs to have a desired situation, which is what they want. And they need to have a goal, which, which is a more tangible way of defining what they want, right? Then we need to have steps, which are basically tangible problem-solving actions laid out in a coherent linear fashion, in other words, just a plan. Then we need to have foundations, which is reasoning for the steps actually being safe to use. So you have these like, you have, remember, we've got current situation, desired situation, and then we've got steps in between that see people can climb to get what they want. You're selling the steps, right? But the thing is, is that the prospect needs to understand the, step, the steps are safe. So we need to have something that I call foundations. Then you need a trampoline. It's gonna sound weird, but I'll visualize it in a second. A trampoline is someone or something to catch the person if they fall or like stop them from breaking their legs basically. And time is how long it takes to build and climb the steps. So let's actually look at this. This is how you make money. Now, excuse my terrific drawings. Anyone who's been watching me for any period of time will understand that I do not really have a significant level of artistic prowess, but I'm hoping that this does in some way, shape or form make sense to you. And the reason this is unfamiliar is because no one else teaches business like this. Nobody else, everyone just monkey see, monkey do. Here's the best offers, off you go. Good luck. Sorry, you can't think for yourself, mate. Bye. Like, we're not here to do that, all right? So here's how it works. So we've got person, sad, current situation. Here's where they are unhappy. They're unhappy because there's a mess, which is a problem that needs to be fixed to achieve an outcome that drives, like satisfies a drive that they have. And then they have desired situation and their goal, right? So this is the outcome, the end result of the result of the result of working with you. This should align with their goal and this is where they want to be. So then what we have is a couple of important things here. So you'll notice we have the steps. So the steps is your methodology, right? These are the instructions or things that you or they have to do and build to actually get what they want. Now, if you watched my last video or the video before that, I made a video, no, 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 no. There's a video that will have come out on the very beginning of October and it's called um, How to Build an Agency to 10K a Month. And it walks you through how to actually build a business, right? And how to create steps for yourself to achieve what you want. It's a very similar premise to here. So often what we do for ourselves is, is kind of the same thing as what we're doing for our clients, right? Anyway, we have the methodology, which is the steps we build, right? So it's like step one, source lead. Step two, reach out to lead. You, you get the point, right? Then we have the foundations of the steps. The foundations are really important because you can go and say to a customer, hey, this is step one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But the customer's probably tried those steps before. This ain't their first rodeo. You're not the first person to try and pitch them something. And other people have told them they can generate leads and do lead nurturing before. So you need to have the foundations of your steps and your ducks in order. And what that means is being able to say to your customers, I know that at step three, you're worried about X, Y, and Z, but I have A, B, and C to combat X, Y, and Z. So you're going to be, you're going to be safe on that step. And I'm going to explain more about this in, in, in a second. Then we have the trampoline. 
And then we have the time. So the time's important because obviously there's a time elapsed between the person being where they are and where they wanna be. But the trampoline's probably the most important thing because a trampoline makes them feel safe. This is the guarantee, this is the risk reversal. This catches someone and the idea is it bounces them back to where they were or slightly better before they start working with you. So if you're gonna ask a stranger to hold your hand and climb the steps with you, the stranger needs to understand that if I fall and this person lets go of me, Am I gonna like completely shatter my legs or am I actually gonna be okay? And if there's a trampoline below the steps, then the person knows that if they fall, they're gonna bounce back up and be at the same level they were before they started working with you. Because the reason most people don't buy from agencies or from anyone really, is because they think that if this doesn't work, I'm gonna be worse off than I was before. And they're already in enough pain as it is, and they don't wanna be in a worse position, that would be even more painful. So that's why they don't usually buy, right? So that's why you need to have a trampoline. Kind of falls apart otherwise. Don't know if you've seen any like parkour fail videos on YouTube before. You know, there's like gruesome, like, you know, people like flipping off buildings and then like they just like completely like break their ankles and stuff. That's kind of like what you're asking your clients to do without like a safety net because they don't know that it's like safe. They don't know that you're good at what you do. They're just trusting you because they haven't got much choice. So now let's actually do some work. <laughs> so we've, we've, I've gone through, I've walked you through some theory, which is very important theory, may I add. And now let's actually build out something that I call your offer deck. Okay, so this will give you crystal clear clarity. That was a pretty nice roll off the tongue thing. Crystal clear clarity, I like that, on exactly what you're offering and where your leverage for client acquisition lies. So now we're actually gonna put some, some rubber to road, some pen to paper and start building your offer. Because I've given you 50 proven offers, but I want you to make your own. I want you to be unique and special, all right? I think that's what you, what you deserve to, to a degree. I don't just want you to like, copy what, you know, what everybody else in your niche has done and copy all the competitors. Because if, if you do that, you, you're, you're, it's just monkey see, monkey do. You're no different to anyone else. You're still gonna struggle with the same problem because like I said, niches don't saturate, but offers do. So if you're using like, you can look at what people are doing, successful people in your niche, and you can be inspired by that. And you can be like, damn, that, that seems to work. That's pretty cool. But as soon as you immediately copy from them, you lose. It's the same example where like, let's say, here's a perfect example, you estimate YouTube. You're watching this video now, I'm hoping you're enjoying it, I'm hoping you find it pretty useful, I'm hoping you find it pretty helpful. Imagine you watch this, right? And then two weeks later, another SMA YouTuber launches another video with a Google Doc, and it's all colorful, and they're talking about offers, and they've, they've got these, the same diagrams, but they just reworded it slightly. You're gonna be like, well, you're just copying that dude. And everyone will realize it's kind of like the Russian guy that copies Mr. Beast. Sure, he can like he can make some money, but it's not original, it's not fun. And I'm actually gonna predict now that a bunch of SMA YouTubers are gonna start making Google Docs as soon as they see how well these videos do. Be really cringe if this video just completely dropped and now I've made an incorrect prediction. But if you see colorful Google Docs, you, you know it's my idea. Anyway, ego aside, let's actually get into this. So let's build your offer. I want you to answer each segment in as much detail as humanly possible. So this is the sort of thing like, we talk about doing like client, we talk about doing market research, knowing something in your market. But then if I asked you like, okay, tell me about your niche's problem. You should, you need to be able to write like a full A4 font size 11 page on that problem. Why it exists, the full nature of the thing, the full shebang. If you can't do that, you're not gonna be able to build compelling offers because compelling offers come from a good deep product market understanding. Now, right now, if you're brand new to your niche, you probably haven't got much clue, and that's why it's so hard for you to acquire clients. But as you push on through stubborn persistence, I'm hoping you can get some sales calls in, and by doing those sales calls, you understand and you can continuously rework this thing. Your offer is not static. You have to improve it and improve it and improve it, okay? So I'm gonna walk you through this resource, and then I'm gonna walk you through an example, and then I want you to do it yourself for your business. And this is probably one of the most important things you could ever do ever in your business because all of your client acquisition and all of your systems in your business are catalyzed by your offer, right? So it's the biggest point of leverage, so don't skip on this, and, and you can skip it if you want, but like, you're not gonna do anything very successful. Let's get into this, so your offer deck. So we've got these eight things, right? All the way from the current situation down to the time. What I want you to do is describe the current situation of your prospect. So what we're doing is we're basically just, I want you to just describe what this looks like here, but for your product and for your prospect and for your market. Describe the current situation. What is their daily life like with the problem they have? So if you, like describe, I thought describe their current situation or describe this is a little bit too vague. I want to give you like a little bit of a handicap with the questions. So all you're doing here is answering questions. It's not really that difficult, okay? It's not shiny. This isn't like anything too fancy, but it's important. What sort of emotions come as a result of their current situation? How does being in this situation affect their personal life? 
How does being in this situation affect their family life? And how does being in this situation just impact them in general? Okay, this is their current situation. The more detail you have, the better. I'm going to blow you away in a minute, by the way, with my understanding of my niche. You're going to, it's going to blow you away. Describe the mess. What actually is the problem? This is an important thing. Like, what do they think the problem is? And then what actually is the problem? Because often the perceived problem is miles off the real one. And if you really want to solve the problem, you have to understand what the true problem actually is. So for example, in my niche with agency owners, coaching consultants who want to get clients, they think their problem is that they don't have the right cold email copy or the right sales scripts, but their problem is they don't know how to think. They don't have the right belief systems, character, mindset, consistency, the full mindset shebang, right? And, it, and, and, and you know, I'm telling you that now, and maybe you struggle with client acquisition and you're like, no, there's no way. But I'm hoping that this video has made a good case in point as to why that is true, right? Because I've just walked you through like half an hour, 45 minutes of, of theory, but your eyes should now be completely opened to exactly what you're dealing with. So now you actually know like what's going on. You've, I've, I've revealed the wiring, you've seen under the hood, and now you can actually fix the problem instead of just like relying on some monkey see monkey do thing. Okay, because monkeys can't fix problems, right? They can create them. How long has this problem or this mess existed? What have they done to try and solve this in the past? And why have they failed to solve this problem before? This is describing the problem, the mess, that creates the painful current situation and prevents them from achieving the desired situation. Then we describe the desired situation. So what would their life look like if the mess was cleaned up and the problem was solved? What emotions would be present if the situation was achieved? How does being in the new situation affect their personal life? How does being in the new situation affect their family life? How does being in the new situation affect them? And who, in their, who is in their desired situation they look up to? So this is an important thing. Like, who does your market look up to, right? Who do they want to be? Who do they want to model? Who has their desired life? Describe the goal. What do they want? And how long have they wanted this? And then, this is a very important thing. It's one of the most important things you can do to understand your niche. It's called Socratic reasoning, okay? And this is basically where you ask why five times. Sometimes you want to do even more than that, but five is usually enough to get to the bottom of it. You ask what their goal is, and you ask, right, how long have they wanted it? So you've got the what and the when done. But now we need to understand the why. Why do they want what they want? And if, if you don't get very far on this, don't worry. Just give it a try. Try and theorize it out. And after you do like 100 sales calls, you'll be able to answer all these questions in, in way more detail, by the way. So I'm going to actually recommend that. Like, for now, do this to the best of your ability. And then try and use this to get some sales calls. And then once you've got some sales calls, then it's time to actually um, come back and do this like after like 30 to 100 calls. Describe the steps. So exactly what action needs to be taken by you or them to clean up the mess and solve the problem and achieve the goal. Be clear and structured and order it. One, two, three, four, five, etc. Describe the foundation. So what does the market think is the flaw in your steps and how do you overcome this? So now if you remember, we've got the steps, the you know one to five things you have to do to get results with me, Mr. Prospect. But now we actually need to describe like the foundations of why those steps are sound. So I'm going to give some examples in a second, so just bear with me. So how can you make the steps feel safe to climb without using a guarantee or risk reversal? Because this is the thing is the guarantee and the risk reversal makes people, that is the real safety net for the entire offer. But the other thing that makes them feel safe is them knowing you've already solved problems that come as a result of them taking the steps to solve the problem. Primary example, let's say you go to a chiropractor and say, hey, I can help you get more clients. Step one to getting more clients is to get them more leads. But the immediate problem that they perceive with that step is that the quality of the leads aren't going to be very good. And so you want to lay the foundation for that step to be quality leads, right? And actually explain to them how you get quality leads and how they can rest, be rest assured that everyone you bring them is financially and, and, and pain qualified to actually purchase from them. Because it's a problem, it's a concern they're going to have and you've got to make them feel safe with these steps. Because if you don't do that, they're going to step on step one and then they're going to bang, fall to the trampoline and done, your, your relationship's over. So what problems do they anticipate with your plan that you can offer some reassurances with? Why might the prospect think your steps will fail? What's the remedy? Why have similar steps with another agency not worked in the past? What's the remedy, right? So how do you solve this? Let me give an example. Let's say you want to start an agency, so my earlier suggestion, that helps successful high ticket info businesses with their show up rate. If you come to me and say, hey, Charlie, I'm going to get you to an 80% show up rate. And you lay out the steps you're going to use to do that. And on, on that step is, you know, call prospects the day before to, to you know, that's that step number four. Is I'm going, to, I'm going to call every single prospect the day before each call to confirm the appointment. 
Well, my immediate concern there is I've already tried to do that. I've already implemented the system. So why should I trust that that step is worthwhile? That's when you need to come equipped with an answer and a rebuttal to say, hey, so I'm going to call these people, but I've got this framework that, that, that uses this, 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 and this, and relies on this, and is also backed up by this, so that it won't be anything you've tried before, but it actually works. You need to have, you need to, this is, this is where it gets deep. This is where the true perception of value is created because you're solving the overarching macro problem, but the micro problems that constitute the entire thing. Remember, if you want to win a war, all you have to do is win all the little battles. And so that's, that's how this works in business and creating offers. Describe the trampoline. So how are you going to reverse the risk for them? And if your plan fails and the steps fall through, like what the hell, like how, how's that going to work for them? How are you going to reverse the risk? How can you make them feel financially secure and safe and trust you, right? And how can they know that if it goes wrong, they aren't worse off from when they started? You must have a trampoline. If you don't have the confidence to have a guarantee or some sort of risk reduction, how are they going to have the confidence to buy? Now, they can have the confidence to buy if you've got a ton of testimonials or you, you know, you've got this insane level of conviction yourself. But at the end of the day, like the easiest way to build confidence is just like say we work pay on results, we do pay on performance, we do this, that, 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 and the other. And describe the time. So overall, how long are the steps going to take to cause the effect they want? So remember, what we're doing here is really this is cause and effect, right? We're putting a series of things into motion to basically create an effect. So we're causing to effect. To effect, we must cause, okay? So basically, what's the time? Like how long is it going to take to actually do this for them to achieve their goal and get their desired situation? What's the time for each step? Now, you might even want to break this down by like, if you've got like four or five main steps that, you, that you're going to implement, maybe you want to say it's going to take me three days to do first step. And by the way, this isn't all client facing stuff. This is just you getting clear on what the hell you're actually doing. Because a lot of the time, all of the chaos that you feel around your business and all of this like mess that you're creating and all of your procrastination and demotivation often stems from just a lack of clarity because procrastination is usually born from ambiguity. So if you're trying to get clients, but you don't really know what the hell you're dealing with or what you're selling or what you're even helping them do, you're probably not going to try and actually make money, right? So this is so important. This is more for you than it is for your clients. Do it. So here's an example, right? And this is going to scare you a little bit. This is designed to terrify the life out of you, to be honest, because, well, you're probably watching this as an agency owner and you're probably watching this as a relatively new agency owner or someone that hasn't achieved a huge amount of success yet. And I would define that as someone who hasn't got to like 50 grand a month or even 100 grand a month. So what I'm now going to do is walk you through this exercise, but for my niche. And I'm hoping that by... By the way, this is an important thing because <laughs> I think I'm right with this stuff, but you guys actually are the market. So if, you're at, if you've made it to this point in the video and you're actually smart enough to have a decent enough attention span to watch like 45 minutes of content, if this seems right to you, I would like you to kindly comment below saying, Charlie, you're, you're kind of on point. Scary man, right? So describe the current situation. So I'm going to describe the current situation of my niche, which is agency owners, coaches and consultants. More, more agency owners, really. So frustrating, but more than anything, extremely up and down. The average agency owner, the 80% that are still figuring it out, go through two mental states. You guys go from extreme confidence, determination, and drive, and then to extreme doubt, demotivation, and anxiety. Daily life is not easy for you. You know you need to do outreach and make cold calls, but you keep putting it off. You delude themselves, or you delude yourself into thinking that you're making progress by keeping busy. And you also delude yourself into thinking that you're making progress by working on yourself and developing yourself and building good habits and watching Hamza. I love Hamza, but it's not gonna get, he's not gonna help you get clients, trust me. Or learning. By the way, I, I actually love Hamza. You should watch his videos, but like not when you're trying to get clients because well, you're not making cold calls, right? They procrastinate, which is the main thing. They don't do outreach. Everyone, this is the other thing, the life of an agency owner at the beginning. All of, everyone around you has their doubts. You're losing friends. You're getting frustrated that no one understands your drive and goals. You feel weird. You feel like you don't fit in. You, you find yourselves judging the comfortable masses. You're, you're judging people and turning your backs on people who do nine to fives. And secretly, you're judging people who have normal lives. You're like, that's boring. I don't respect anyone that does that. Maybe you don't, but I certainly did at the beginning. I don't anymore. You have a point to prove and you feel like you're on a timer. It has to work soon because you can't keep justifying this to your parents, your friends and yourselves that it's going to work. You pray that your doubts don't represent the truth. But you're a soldier. You work. You do what you must. You don't quit. The market and business constantly throws problems and bad things at you, but you remain consistent in your efforts. But you get extremely emotional when bad things happen to you in your business. You see problems as barriers, not as opportunities. You buy a 997 course from someone you look up to, only to be disappointed, but you still look up to the person who sold you the course. You have massive imposter syndrome kicking in when signing your first few clients, 
And also you feel so out of place on sales calls. You spend as little time as possible on outreach and find worthless distractions like building a website while knowing you're being an idiot and deluding yourself. You're primarily driven by the word freedom. You want financial location and time freedom. This is your current situation. I'm hoping this is your current situation. This is my understanding of the agency niche. And this is also why I'm able to make so much damn money. And I honestly, it really does just come back to this above all, because all of my marketing, sales, business, product, it's all built out of what you guys are like and what you guys want. And the better I understand that and the more, the more attuned I am to exactly who you are and where you are and what you want and why you exist and everything, the better I can build my business around you. This is it, this is the point. This is the point I'm trying to make in this video is everything in your business needs to be built around your market. So the better you understand your market, the better you can build your business. The understanding of your market is the single greatest weapon you have to building your company. The reason I can make good YouTube videos that get your attention and get you to click and get you to sit here whilst I chat bollocks for four, it's not bollocks, it's actually quite a good video. Everyone. But the reason I can sit here and get you to listen to me for nearly an hour of your time, when you can't even watch a full Netflix episode without opening your phone, is because I know you. I know what you want, I know who you are, I know what you so secretly crave and desire. I know your bad habits, I know your good habits. I know where you go on the weekends. I know what you think about at night. I know what, what emotions you feel. I know what you've been through. I know what your childhood was like. I know what your parents are like. I know, ex I know who you talk to, when you talk to them, how you talk to them. I could write a day in your life better than you could in your own diary. And because of that, I can build my entire business to suit you so perfectly that you have no choice but to buy my thing. And when you can do that, you have an infinite level of power in the market and you can get to eight figures without even thinking about it. And if you're wondering why I have such a freakish, freakishly high understanding of you and who you are, it's because I was you. <laughs> I was exactly where you are now, which is also why I like making these videos because of, anyway, let's get back to it. You blame most of your business problems on your niche. You put 10 grand a month on a pedestal and you see it as the be all goal in your life. It's all you want right now. You use an agency to manifest your potential. This is the thing, right? So you want a marketing agency and you, you know, you're not really that attached to the idea of a marketing agency. You just want a business, right? Because you want a way to manifest your personal potential and channel an unusual amount of conscientious energy into it. You want to work. You want to solve problems. When you're not solving a problem, when you're not working, you get nervous and stressed and you feel worthless. You experience what I would call conscientious guilt which is where if you're not doing something and making progress, you feel like you're wasting away and you feel miserable and depressed. And so the business represents an opportunity for you to escape that terror and that void. You start the agency or you started your agency out of anger or some sort of negative emotion. So you were either angry at yourself or a group of people or a situation, or maybe you were just terrified of mediocrity, which is why you started. Now you have these emotions. You feel frustrated, you feel angry, you feel anxious, you feel scared. You have lots of doubt. Doubt's a big one for you. You could just be going to bed at like 11 p.m. And then suddenly like you have this overwhelming like emotion of doubt as to whether or not this is actually going to work. But however, you have dogged like persistence. You're just stubborn. You stupid old thing. You're wonderful. I love you. You have determination, but you're also panicked. You're stressed. You feel isolated. You feel lonely. You don't really have time to think. It's do or die for you. But you're seeking brotherhood, but you're also desperate. And you're seeking brotherhood. You want to find people that are like you. And it's hard to do that. You're also desperate. You're so desperate for this thing to work. This is you, this is your current situation. Now, if this, if, if this is not you, then this is awfully awkward, but I'm hoping that some things here resonate with you. And if you're wondering what the key to my success has been, it's not some sort of magical talent. It's just understanding you better than you understand yourself. And through doing that, I'm able to, like I said, build everything in my business and all of my products and offers and videos and marketing and ads and outreach and team and lead sourcing and everything that I do comes from this understanding of you because it's all about you it's all about the market it's not about me it doesn't matter what i want it matters what you want so let's talk about your mess the problem you have is you don't know how to get clients and you also don't know how to deliver results for clients you think the problem is you don't have the right email copy you think the problem is you don't have the right sales script or you think the problem is that you don't have the right offer they think or you think that there is a magical silver bullet and all you need to do to solve your problem is just find one shiny video. And this is why you click on stupid YouTube videos like these. Best SMA offers or easiest SMA offers or anything like that. I know what gets you to click, but I can promise you that no 20 minute video is going to solve your entire business. But what does solve your entire business is a paradigm and a way of thinking, which is why I try and get your attention with a shiny object like the 50 best offers, because I know that's what your monkey brain really wants. And that's, I'm not insulting you, I'm just saying 
this is how it is. And I know that if I can Trojan horse some actual rewiring of your brain into this video, you're actually gonna solve the bloody problem. Every time I make a video like this, that's a shiny object video that makes you think like, this is it, this is gonna fix my entire business. What I'm actually trying to do is just give you the shiny object and then use the shiny object as a, as a Trojan horse to get into your brain and play around with your paradigm and your belief system so that you can actually fix the damn problem yourself, which is how it needs to be. I'm hoping I'm doing a good enough job of it. That's my entire strategy for these, <laughs> for these YouTube videos. What actually is the problem? Well, here's the thing. You think the problem is client acquisition and you think the problem is you don't have the right email copy or you don't have the right funnels to deliver results or you don't have the right lead nurturing system to get your clients to show up. But here's the real problem. You don't know how to think. You want an easy solution and you seek an easy solution. So when a real solution comes along that is hard, you reject it. I can't tell you how many people schedule a call with Easy Grow, which is of course, and then they're making like two grand a month or they're just starting their agency. And they've got this problem of client acquisition. And then we explain the program to them and they're like, okay, I can afford that. And then they're like, I don't think I want to do it. And then we're like, why? And they're like, well, because I want a done for you solution. I really want someone to do this for me. And then you're like, why? And they're like, oh, I just, I feel like I should delegate this. You are just a cretin, mate. Who the hell, like, if, if, if client acquisition is the biggest problem in your life right now, why the hell would you delegate it to someone else? It's your problem, it's your responsibility. It really vexes me, man, because like, this is the thing. People just want this easy, painless solution because going through a course, I can tell you right now, if you go through Easy Grow, it's, it's pain. <laughs> it's not easy to go through. It's really difficult, actually. It solves the problem, but it requires like months and months of hard work and dedication and commitment. And I'm not afraid to tell you that because I want to attract the right people to the program. But when someone comes on a call and they're making no money and they haven't got, they've got so much pride that they can't even take a course, I know they're screwed because they'll go and look for an easy solution and because they're looking for an easy solution, it never works, right? So simple. Monkey see, monkey do. You're afraid to think for yourself so you copy other people. You're impatient, you don't give things enough time. Your emotions cause you to make mistakes. You're extremely inconsistent. Your belief systems don't line up with your goals. You struggle to differentiate yourselves with the other thousands of agencies out there and you do everything you can to avoid pain. So this is, the, this is the problem I see with agency owners, is the problem is like them. You are the problem, but you have too much of an ego to admit that. And so what you do is you try to tell yourself that it's the copy, or it's the offer, or it's the lead nurturing funnel, or it's the ads, or it's this, or it's that, or it's some external object. But the thing is, is that if you critically think it through, all of those things in your business come from you. Penny drop moment, pin drop moment, okay? You are the problem. But for as long as you point the finger to an external thing, you're never gonna be taking responsibility for the issue, which means the issue's never solved, okay? So this problem has existed since you were born because the, the reason you are the problem is because, well, you've been through X amount of years, however old you are, right? You've been through that many years of conditioning that has programmed you to live life and have a normal career in a nine to five. So if you were lucky enough to grow up in a household where both your parent, parents were business owners and taught you sales and taught you how to do accounting and think properly like a business owner, then you'd stand way better chance. But if you've been brought up in like just a normal life, you haven't been equipped with the mental tools, belief systems and skills to make a business work. And that's fine because you can learn those skills. And so yeah, if you're anything like me, you haven't been brought up with the like entrepreneurial background. I had extremely supportive parents, but neither of them were business people um, in terms of actually running their own business. So you, you don't have that advantage, right? So basically you're fighting behavioral, mental and belief conditioning that is really designed to optimize you for a mediocre life. And you've bought 997 courses, you've watched hours and hours of videos on YouTube and SMA, you sent some cold emails, made some cold calls, but nothing's really worked for you. And you failed to solve the problem because of the points above. You know, these things here are the reason you haven't solved the problem, really. And you, you declare nothing works, but you've only really tried a handful of things and now you blame your niche and you, you tell yourself that the niche is the reason that you're not successful. I mean, really, it's you. So this is the cornerstone of the issue I see for, for agency owners is, is the lack of responsibility because it's painful to admit it's our fault. So now let's look at the desired situation of agency owners. Well, here's the funny thing because there's this expectation as a reality. So the expectation is that if this problem is solved, then you'll think, you'd think your life will be a utopia. You know, if this problem was solved, you'd experience pure joy. If you knew client acquisition was no longer a problem, you'd be, it'd be amazing. Pure and filtered faith and joy. But the expectation is that your life would be incredible. You'd finally have the money to buy the status symbols that you desire to get the attention of the girls that you didn't get attention from in school. Or maybe, you know, your parents would be proud for once. Maybe, you know, you'd now have compensated for your lack of remarkable performance in school and now you're actually doing something, right? Maybe, maybe finally you can move out, take some responsibility for your finances. Maybe, you know, suddenly you're now the enigma of the family. You've earned, you know, your parents' pride and respect. You buy a car, you buy a watch, you buy new clothes. You're a new man, right? Once this problem is solved, that 
is your desired situation. You look up to Iman Gaji, Hamza, Andrew Huberman, Joe Rogan, take any high value man that gets a lot of attention on the internet you seem to want to be. But the reality is that like, if you solve the problem of client acquisition, the reality is your life will not look like this. It might for a split second, but then you will have to face the demons of client fulfillment and you're actually gonna have to deliver on the results for the clients you've signed. This is the thing like, agency owners, their, their desired situation is basically like all of these expectations here, but the reality is that like that's not what it's like because once you get clients, you've now got responsibilities to solve, like to, to solve these problems for these people, and that's quite difficult as well. And that's why in Easy Grow, what, what we do, I mean, this is why with, when I'm building my offer, my offer is all about client acquisition, right? And I'm I'm all about client acquisition because I know that's all you care about, and and now that that's because that's all you care about, that's how I position my offer. But inside of my product, we have we solve the problem of client fulfillment. But if I told you I can solve client fulfillment, you wouldn't care because it's not a problem for you yet. You don't know it's coming. You don't know what's coming down the line, but I do. So let's describe the goal. So you want 10 grand a month. Maybe you want anywhere between four to 12 grand a month. Well, how long have you wanted this? Well, you've wanted 10 grand a month ever since you saw a YouTuber or an Instagram influencer talk about it or flex a Rolex. 10 grand a month is not a lot of money, by the way, just so you know. And I know that sounds so delusional and so out of touch, but trust me, once you make 10 grand a month, you'll realize how little money it actually is. Okay, just sounds insane, but just trust me when you get that. Let's explore a few lines of the real goal with Socratic reasoning. So you remember what we were doing over here with the offer deck? Remember when we were talking about like this answer, asking why five times? We actually wanna to get to the bottom of why people want the goal, okay? So if your goal is 10 grand a month, let me give you some examples of getting to the bottom of this. I know this is how agency owners work. So I'd say, why do you want 10 grand a month? You would say financial freedom. I'd say, why do you want financial freedom? You'd say, so I can travel wherever I want. I'd say, why do you wanna travel wherever you want? Then you might not know the answer, but the answer might be something along the lines of this. You're unhappy with home, you feel alienated. Well, why do you feel unhappy and alienated? Well, maybe you had a difficult upbringing and it comes down to trauma. <laughs> Here's the thing you have to understand about wanting 10 grand a month or wanting to build a business. You are abnormal. You are not normal. You are weird. You are different. It is not normal or average or mediocre. It's abnormal to want to build a business and to have this you know, strong level of success at such a young age is not normal. And that's fine, right? But you need to understand that if you're, if you're not adhering to the norm, it's because your initial conditions of your psychology and, and your mental state aren't the same as everybody else's, right? And so usually trauma is the thing that drives us forward. And a lot of young guys who are conscientious, we, ha we are blessed with this thing, and young, young girls as well, but I can't speak to girls because I, I don't see them do this much. But a lot of young guys were very blessed. If you're a guy and you've been through trauma and you are by nature conscientious, which means you've got a personality trait, you know, that where, where you're orderly, you want to work hard, etc. Usually you will take trauma and you will use it as a vehicle for you to grow and build. Okay, it's called post-traumatic growth. Trauma can destroy you or it can create you. For me, it created me. Right? I was fortunate enough to, I say fortunate enough to go through bad things. Obviously I didn't enjoy it, but you know, had I not gone through those things, my life would have looked completely different. So if you want 10 grand a month, it's not because you want 10 grand a month, my friend. It's because, you've, it's because you're trying to compensate for something and that's fine. There's a quote from Freud that says that the adult is designed to protect the child. And I don't mean in a parental role, I mean when you become an adult, you start behaving in ways that protects who you were as a kid. And so for me, I was bullied when I was like 10, 11 and 12. It was a horrible three, four years of my life. And it was not fun. But had I not been bullied, I wouldn't have desired this state of control. I wouldn't have felt worthless. And I wouldn't have had all these negative emotions towards myself that would have pushed me and drove, drove me towards building an income and taking control of my life, right? So it destroys you or it's very make or break, but I think every man needs a bit of trauma. And that's a very controversial thing to say, but you know, if you haven't been through anything traumatic, you don't really know what it's like to actually build yourself up and you haven't really got a reason to do anything. So if you have, I'm not saying you have to go through trauma to build a business, by the way, I'm just saying this is my experience, but if you look closely, there's always, there's always a reason as to why you wanna do something. No one's that straightforward, okay? Example two, why do you want 10 grand a month? Well, the answer is always financial freedom. Why do you want financial freedom to be my own boss? Why do you wanna be your own boss? I wanna be in control of my life. Why do you wanna be in control of your life? Because I was bullied and I never wanna give someone power over me. That was my example. That's why I started wanting to make 10 grand a month. Didn't realize it for a long time. Another example from, um, from this isn't from me, but this is like, I, I see this, this is a common one on sales calls. Why do you wanna make 10 grand a month? I wanna buy a Mercedes. I want to buy an Audi. I want to buy a BMW, whatever. Why do you want to buy a Mercedes? I want to buy it for status. Why do you want status? I want attention from women. Why do you want attention from women? Because my mum didn't give me any growing up. Trauma, right? And I know this seems weird and I know it seems deep, but he who has a why can bear almost any how. 
And if you grow up without the attention from your mum or the pride and respect of your father, that's a traumatic experience, right? That's something that you didn't have that you need to become a well-rounded, functioning, healthy human. And so if as a child you didn't, you, you, you didn't have those things, as you become an adult, you will naturally start to look for those things to compensate because it's what you never had it. And so it starts to come through like, you know, cars and all this stuff. So you can like, it, it, I know it seems weird. I know this is a video on how to create an offer for your SMA. So I'm not, I'm not here to lecture you on, <laughs> on therapy and stuff, but this is the level of depth you need to get into to build compelling offers. And this is where you need to go. You need to go to these places and these deep, dark psychological corners of your prospects and your market's minds to really figure out what the hell's actually going on so you can craft your business around them, okay? So for me as an agency owner, I wanted to make 10 grand a month because I was bullied in school, never wanted anyone to have power over me. I felt worthless and I was angry at myself, probably because of the bullying thing. I had this sheer terror at the idea of being average or normal and I was hopeless with girls and I got constantly rejected in school or college. So when I was in school, the whole no bitches thing, man, it was real bad. I did not have much luck. And we all know what that does to a man. And it can do one of two things. It can either turn him into an incel or it can turn him into someone that actually like builds himself up so that he is in a position to have leverage and you know not have to face that rejection. Unfortunately enough, I am not an incel, right? So there we go. So I'm not saying that everyone wants to grow an agency because of trauma. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just giving you some examples of how deep this thing can go and how deep your market understanding can get. But if you want to build a 10 grand a month business at a young age, is probably a weird thing to want to do and it's fine because i wanted to do it as well i'm this is i'm not judging power to you man but usually something's gone wrong psychologically okay you're usually using the business as a shield to protect your adult self from something the child had to go through steps right let's get out of that um <laughs> psychological hell hole before we before we get too deep and start crying but let's describe the steps so these are the steps that i use in my offer right build proper business foundations correct the paradigm correct the mindset overhaul their belief system, build outbound appointment booking skills, build sales skills, build service delivery skills, and then build delegation skills. Then I give them a community to talk to people that are similar to them. And then I give them coaching calls to basically answer any questions on every skill required. These are the steps that I use to solve the problem and help my clients achieve the transformation, right? I know this, this might seem like a backhanded way of selling you my program, but it's the easiest example I can give you of what an offer actually looks like. You do not have to buy my program, all right? There's a link, you can click it, and that's it. Um, there's no other sales pitch incoming, I promise, okay? So just describe the foundation. Let's say, for example, like we're talking about the foundations of the steps. So we need to, I need to give the, the market or you, for example, reassurance that my steps are the right ones to take, right? So for example, you're worried that you will pick the wrong niche. So I'm gonna be like, here are the best niches. You might be worried about the niche being saturated. So I need to have a strategy for that to help you overcome that and, and think the step is sturdy before you step on it. You might have struggles doing the work, so I need to give stellar mindset training. You might be afraid of conflict on sales calls, so maybe I provide a gentle sales approach. You don't know what to say on cold email, I provide cold email copy. You can't be consistent with your work. Charlie, what's the point of me doing easy growth if I can't even get up and do the work? I can't be consistent. Well, let me hold you accountable, for example. Right? No clue what ads will work for clients, we'll provide the ads, etc., etc. Right? You need to understand that when you're building steps, people are going to have doubts in them and you need to understand what those doubts are so you can address them and add more value and give them more reassurance and faith and confidence that what you do works by demonstrating an understanding that you've solved the problem before it even happens, okay? There's a ton more than eight, by the way, but you get the point. Any major perceived obstacle or problem that can come with your steps needs to be addressed. And this, is, this will come in handy when you're handling objections, by the way. And this is also how you do sales calls that have no objections, is when like you present the steps and you, you predict exactly what all the problems are gonna be and then they won't have anything legs to stand on. So the trampoline for us is 20 clients guaranteed or full refund plus $5,000 wire if it doesn't work. That actually is our offer. It's not like some like fake wacky offer. That actually is what we offer. And then we say pay on results to sort of compensate for that. And then the time is 180 days for the 20 clients or 30 to 60 days for the first two to five clients. So this is the offer that we've used and we, we've been using since, wow, well, we've been doing this for like six months now. Yeah, about that, six months. And this offer has basically taken us from 200 grand a month to a million a month. So you can see how, like this is actually just a live example of, a, of what backs up my, you know, 800 grand to a million dollar a month income, okay? With 70%, 60% profit margins. Now let's translate your offer deck. So now that you've built out your offer deck, or if you haven't done, and you're the kind of person that doesn't do the work, then I don't know what to tell you. 
But now that you've built out your offer deck because you're a good subscriber, let's translate it into an actual message. So now it's time to actually turn this understanding into a tangible, clear message that you can put in front of your prospects in your market to elicit a response of an appointment or a sale, okay? We've got this thing called the offer, create, offer messaging creation cheat sheet. So this is super straightforward. Um, it walks you through how to actually build these offers, right? So you know at the very beginning here, when we saw the 50 examples, um, I'm gonna show you how you can sort of create your own example and add your own unique spin on it, okay? So the foundations of an irresistible offer, focused, results orientated, tangible, polarizing, unique, timeline, and bonus. Example here, step one is the offer hypothesis, which is basically understanding that your service is not your offer. And what you do to get your clients' results is obviously not the offer, just as a reminder, your service is delivering on your offer. But what's an offer? Well, obviously we've, we've been through this. What you wanna do is actually sort of build this out. So it needs to be focused, right? So by focus, we mean it's one person, one problem. You're not offering to multiple people, you're calling out one specific person with one specific problem. Are you a high ticket business owner doing more than seven figures with a show rate of less than 80%? That's very specific, but it's gonna call the right person out, okay? Results orientated. If this comes down to the premise of like, you know, I can get this or I can get this. It's less about like, I'm gonna do SEO for you, or I'm gonna do Facebook ads for you. No, it's about I'm gonna get you this amount of appointments or this many people in your door, or this much revenue is gonna be added, or this is gonna be your ROAS. Outcome driven. Tangible, right? We actually need to put a number to the result we're gonna get them. Because just saying I'm gonna get you more appointments doesn't really ring home, because they might just think that's like three more appointments as opposed to 100. Polarizing. So polarizing, this is basically where we're trying to attract the right people and repel the wrong people. And so, you know, so that way you can like, you can say to someone, this, this is for these people, it's not for these people. Unique, okay, very straightforward, cut through the noise. Something just a little bit different, doesn't have to be massively unique. Timeline and guarantee. So timeline, we've discussed this, guarantee, we've discussed this. And that's basically how you structure it. We can help you get X amount of result for exactly who you are in this time frame with a unique way of doing it, or you don't pay you know, using our foolproof six step process. So step one is the promise. Here are some examples. And step two is the goal alignment and risk reduction. So the, the key here is the goal alignment where we have this incentive alignment. Now, if you're unfamiliar with how to actually structure your incentive with your client, I made a video very recently, actually, it will be like the one before this in my YouTube feed on the best SMA models, like, and the best incentive structures for pay on performance and stuff like that and pricing. So I'd suggest you go and watch that if you're unfamiliar with how to do this. It will also give you a way better foundation for building an offer as well, okay? The more of this information you have before you build, the, the, the easier it's gonna be to build it, okay? Some more examples of that. Then we have step three, which is making it unique. You're just adding on some text that basically nobody else has added on before. And it doesn't have to be anything too shiny, very straightforward. Step four is to make it even more unique. And this is where you're gonna start looking at your offer deck, right? So you're gonna look at this here, and this is where you make it more unique. So for example, if I wanted to make my offer more unique, I could say, you will become one step closer to living like Iman Gaji. <laughs> because that's what everybody seems to want, you know, in this agency space. Because Iman introduced a ton of people to the agency space, and they see his lifestyle, and they buy his stuff because they want his lifestyle. And so if I wanted to make my offer just slightly more unique, I could say, hey, if you buy my thing, you're one step closer to this, 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 and this, or there's all sorts of reasons. But the, the more thorough this offer deck is, the more pages of information you have, the more unique you can make this because I've got an infinite number of things that I can pull from here to, you know, to really make it work. Does that make sense? I'm hoping it makes sense. Important things to remember, your service is not your offer. No seven figure agency has been built without an offer that stands out. The best type of offers are where the goals of the agency and the client are aligned. Guarantees build trust instantly. A crazy offer will be 100 good testimonials, and this is the truth, right? People don't really trust testimonials anymore, but they trust good offers. All you need to make 30 to 100K a month is a good offer that books appointments and closes deals, and then a system that delivers on that offer 95% of the time. Offers need to be a no-brainer or hard to say no to. Set clear expectations on what needs to be done and what your client needs to do, which is obviously where we've got these steps. The bigger the promise, the more clients you will convert. Remove as much risk as you can for the client. The less risk they have, the more clients you will sign. Very simple, there's a relationship here. If you're guaranteeing and promising a lot in your offer, you better make sure you can deliver nine out of 10 times. Offer brings clients, service keeps clients around. The best offer is basically a guarantee the client cares about removing as much risk as possible. If your offer is irresistible, you can charge as much as you want, by the way. That's a kind of cool thing. And the first month, when we were doing our agency, we were like, this is, I remember this a while ago. So when I was doing like 10 grand a month, as soon as I fixed my offer, I went to like 30 grand a month, like, you know, 30 days later, it was kind of insane. And the more saturated your niche is, the better the offer has to be. So that's just a, a real simple offer messaging creation cheat sheet. And that's everything for this video. If you need help getting more clients, there's a link in the description. It's a video of me trying to pitch you something and sell you something. If you don't trust me or you don't like me, don't click the link, okay? But it's literally a VSL, it's a funnel. I'm not afraid to tell you that. It's a sales video, okay? You can click it. If you don't want to click it, I don't care. Just apply this information, learn from it, and I hope it helps you. 
I really do hope this video has helped you. I put a ton of effort into it and not that that really matters, but if I, I wish I had this when I was starting, man. I wish that I had this when I was 18, 19, trying to figure this all out. I would have achieved what I wanted to achieve way faster with, with significantly less pain and less suffering. And if in any way, shape or form, I've been able to do that for you today, even by 1%, my work here is done. I hope I have, I hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you're new. I love you. Have a good day. Bye.